In this episode, I'll be finishing up a three-part series where I attempt to build the fastest AM3 Plus computer possible. If you missed the first two episodes, I'll link them in the video and in the description below. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so we're booting. You'll have to forgive me for this camera angle. I don't trust that I have enough CPU power to put any kind of video capture on this machine. So I've had the opportunity to install a bunch of games and also a bunch of my tools. Everything seems to be running really well. If we go to Task Manager, you can see it's doing pretty good. So the CPU is good, memory is good. I have in here right now the 6500 that I had purchased for the Dell. And what was interesting is, is I started with this video card and actually saw some pretty heavy bottlenecking. And I'll go ahead and I'll bring up Fortnite and show. All right, after a very long time to load, let's go ahead and set up our settings. I'm gonna focus on these two first. Right now I'm just going for the maximum amount of frame rate I can get out of the computer. So by turning off the V-Sync, that means it's not going to wait and sync each and every screen. So it'll start painting the next one before the last one finishes loading. So you get that screen tearing. And then frame rate limit, I'm gonna to set to unlimited. So I want it to just go as fast as it possibly can. Keep in mind, this is gonna really hammer the processor and the video card. So real world, you probably wouldn't wanna do this. Um, everything else, I'm gonna go ahead and dial this up as high as I can. I'm just gonna start at 1080p high or epic settings on this game. And I don't have ray tracing, so that's, and we'll keep the show FPS here and we'll hit apply. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let that load. We apply the changes and I was gonna bring up MSI Afterburner, but as you're about to see, I don't really need to get a benchmarking tool to tell me that the performance is bad. I mean, just look at the animation here. So let's bring up the tools and see why we're getting such poor frame rates and see if this is something we can fix. All right, so I've got Afterburner on and you can see right now my GPU is maxed out at 100%. And the CPU is hitting 60 to 70%, 50%. So it's all over the place here, but I am averaging five or six frames a second, just in the lobby. This right here is just like already bottlenecked. The GPU cannot handle this. I got this far and I decided, let's take the video card out of my other computer that I actually do a little bit of gaming on. I will pull the 6750 out of it and put it in here and let's take a look at what we can do. All right, and now we are back. Let's go ahead, fire this up. One thing I do wanna check out is how this 9590 is doing because it's air cooled. If we look right now, I am idling at 32 degrees Celsius. As far as the CPU, it's doing great. And if you look down below, our VRM is really only at 31 as well. So, and if you're wondering how I was able to achieve such good temperatures, um, on this particular motherboard, it doesn't work for all motherboards. I know there's been people who have tested this. If you put a fan on the backside of the motherboard, and I'll put a picture of, of the thin fan I was able to fit in this case, it's actually blowing cold air onto the back of the motherboard right under the CPU socket. So I don't know if that's just fooling the sensors or if it's actually dissipating a lot of heat, but it's worth about six or seven degrees Celsius. All right, so we have the bigger video card installed. Our thermals are looking good. Let's run a couple of benchmarks real quick just to get a sense of how we're doing. So let's pull up our hard drive. I'll go ahead and I'll do a time lapse and we'll, we'll check it out. So as you can see right off the bat, the numbers are great. They're five, six times higher than what you would be able to get normally on this motherboard. Now the random reads and writes down below are more in line with this generation of motherboard, but still it was a huge improvement over what I was getting on the other Sabertooth board. 
we'll go ahead and do sign bench and we'll we'll check the CPU performance. It's going to be pretty bad. So I put things in time lapse and we went ahead, I let this run and complete and thermal stayed really well. Um, but as you're going to see here, it got a very low score. So I'm going to get everything dialed in for my overclock. Here I've got 4800 megahertz on the processor, 2133 on DDR3 memory. Uh, I have my voltages set. The big thing here is just making sure that my power delivery is set to ultra fast and extreme. That keeps the computer more stable whenever it's running at these higher clock settings. And just go ahead and save this and let's get going. You know, we've been the computer's been on for quite some time. We've been rebooting it, everything else. We're still in the 30s. Now, if I were to run um, Signbench, we come up to about 57, 58 degrees Celsius. So. so CPU is running a little bit lower and the GPU is a little bit higher, but let's just go ahead and get into the game here. What happens if we throw more graphics at it? Let's take it all the way up. So now I'm at 4K. This video card shouldn't even be playing this game <laughs> at 4K. Yeah, we're at whoo, 19 frames a second. But again, the CPU and the video card are both maxed on this. So we're back to where we were. It's, it's playable. It still will stutter from time to time. Our temperatures are still doing pretty good. Um, Uh-oh. I'm busy talking and not playing, and I don't have a gun. So this isn't good. Oh, we'll take that. Why would you leave a turret? Who leaves a turret? I should make a whole entire point of this video is me using the turret. Now, this is really interesting. Check it out. My CPU has gone all the way down to 50, 60%, but the GPU is still maxed. Oh, these guys are going to hate this. Shoot me. Come on. Oh, my God. All right, get him. Feel the power of my turret. I will take that gun. Thank you very much. You were just defeated by an AMD FX processor that is older than you are. Who else wants to feel the wrath of my terrible gaming setup here? But yeah, this is interesting. The CPU usage has dropped quite a bit. So I don't know, maybe the game just needed a little bit of time to load. It still pings at times to 100%, but it's actually running really well. Oh, hello there. Go ahead, shoot me. I'm gonna dance. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, he had a golden gun and I got him with the turret. I don't even have a shield or nothing, all right. Well, this was supposed to turn into a test, but it's actually kind of a hilarious gaming uh, session I've got going here. Who else wants to feel the wrath? I'm going to hit somebody with the turret, and I'm going to emote while I'm doing it. A few moments later. All right, here we go. Just emoting. Look at me dancing. Get him, turret. That's why the turret's so good. <laughs> ah. Oh my gosh, this has got to be the worst way to get it taken out of this game. Oh my, let's go do it again. A few moments later. Ah, uh, my son has joined me. Can I play? Wes, check this out. Check this out. I throw the turret. Dance. And then... We just sit here and dance. Oh no, it's shooting the rock. 
That's okay. How is he not shooting? Yeah, go get him. Go get him. Okay. I got one kill. I'm just gonna sit here. You have to go get him. Okay. Oh, he'll come back. They always come back. It's too tempting not to shoot me. <laughs> So I settled in and played a couple more games. In this um, demo I'm showing here, I had the frame rate set to unlimited, so I'm getting a little higher frame rate, but you'll see the processor usage is up to about 70%, 75% at times. What was really interesting though is this is showing that the video card is bottlenecked, even the 6750. So if I wanted, I could actually drop a bigger video card in here and see even better performance. Let's go ahead and check out some of the other games I downloaded. The next game up was Need for Speed Heat, and I was pretty encouraged when I loaded into the game seeing frame rates as high as in the 130s. So I immediately went to settings and said, let's go ahead and dial this up. So we'll put everything up to ultra, but we'll still keep it at that 1920 by uh, 1080. And immediately it was into stutters. I had all kinds of performance problems. As you can see, I'm driving around and the frame rate's all over the place and very inconsistent. What I do notice about this game is the longer you play it, it's almost like it's just got to catch up and build everything in the game world. It's got to put everything into memory. The shaders have to be loaded. I don't know. Maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but the performance does improve, but never gets particularly great. So from there, I decided let's dial it down to high settings and see if we could get this to a pretty good gaming experience. And that helped quite a bit. It brought me up to about 60, you know, high 50s, low 60 frames per second. And I decided we'll, we'll drop things one more time just to see if it has that much of an effect. So we brought everything down to medium. And this is where it really just kind of stabilized around that 60 frames per second mark. So as you're gonna see here, um, it just smoothed out. I mean, 60 frames per second is not a bad gaming experience. It's not eSports. It's not gonna hit 200 frames per second like everybody else's you know, modern day gaming computer. So I'd still chalk this up to being playable, but it definitely was a bigger hit than what Fortnite was, you know, we saw in Fortnite. But from there, I decided, what the heck, we'll go full send, we'll put everything back up to Ultra, and we'll put it on 4K and give it a, a, give it a try and see how it works out. So I'll get my settings set here, and we go ahead and get back into the game. And this, I was really surprised. It felt really smooth. And if you notice, I'm in the 60 frames per second, and my numbers are looking pretty good. In fact, the game just kind of held here perfectly fine while I was playing it. So again, I think it might just be that, you know, things have to load and it takes the first couple of minutes to kind of build the world and get everything into memory. And that's it for this one. On to the next one. The next game up is going to be a little bit of a controversial title. This one came out while I was filming the video and it's called Skull and Bones. Now, I honestly don't think this is very fair because this game was in development when my computer was new. So I can't tell if I'm just running software that matches the age of the hardware, but I can say that this game ran fine. Again, I was kind of stuck at that 60 frames per second. That might just be my cheap monitor that I'm using um, and its refresh rate. I'm not really sure, but... As far as um, everything else, it ran just fine. I was able to dial the graphics all the way up and you can see for yourself, it ran smooth. Last on the list was World of Tanks. 
Um, I will admit I do not know how to play this game. I have only played it a couple of times, and I installed it, um, and on its default settings coming into the game, you can see I'm already getting some really good frame rate. I went ahead and I'm going to dial up the graphics and see how bad I can punish this uh, this gaming setup. So we'll go ahead and get it set to 4K and highest settings we can go. All right, and we're going to give it a moment to load. And when it comes back up, it really had no effect on the frame rate. Game looked better. Um, but yeah, it didn't really hit much of a, it didn't take much of a performance hit. So I'm just guessing this game because it's kind of cross-platform mobile. It's designed kind of like Fortnite to run, you know, pretty well on everything. That That's what I'm kind of seeing here is a, a pretty well-optimized game. Um, but yeah, I was able to play. Uh, as you can see, it looks pretty good. It's definitely playable. So I, again, I think, you know, overall, is it a... a awesome high-end gaming computer no it, it wouldn't be but it's uh it's handling this game pretty well so that's about it hopefully you've enjoyed this uh trip into madness trying to build the fastest am3 plus computer uh, i had a lot of fun on this project and i learned a ton i am super happy with the results i think this pc it works beautifully for all of the things that we are going to use it for surfing the internet kids can do some homework uh, playing some games i would have never guessed that this old of technology could be pushed this far. You know, you're using it on a standard normal monitor with 60 hertz refresh rate and you limit the game to 60 frames a second um, and just dial down some of the shadows and reflections, maybe from epic to medium or high. With this combination, it'll play everything. It'll play everything at 1080p, not a great amazing gaming computer, but it will play games. Does it make sense for you to build one? And the answer is absolutely not. I could have built a much better computer for what I spent to build this one. This one was a labor of love. Uh, I love learning. I love being curious and seeing how far can I push it. And I pushed this computer as far as it would go. Hard drive is running six times faster. Not to mention the fact I had to mod the BIOS to get the hard drive to work. Then the SATA ports that were on the motherboard, which that alone, I don't think when it was built, anyone would have anticipated that or thought about that. The fact that this motherboard is such a rare motherboard to have PCI Express 3.0 on it, um, even if it is kind of a fake version of it, still is faster than what was out on the market. The 9590 running with air cooling. The fact that I've got a Noctua cooler, you know, running on it, and just that they would honor that and send me the mounting hardware for an AM3 motherboard. I ran into problem after problem after problem on this computer, and honestly, I love when I run into problems. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to learn something new, and I just love solving these types of things. Um, so th this project, absolutely perfect for me. Does it make sense to go out to eBay and build this? Absolutely not. Don't do that. Save your money and spend it on something more modern. And watch me uh, do dumb things with computers and cars from time to time. So that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you had fun watching me and this journey of trying to figure out where the absolute limit is of this technology. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again.